let's talk about why I quit drinking. This month I am 10 months sober and the heartache and the pain and the frustration that comes along with being sober is nothing like I've ever experienced. 10 months ago I started this channel not realizing how many lives I would help and change. You guys will never understand how big of an influence you guys have been for me and you keep me accountable and it's messages like this one that I'm going to share with you that really help push me to keep showing up for you guys every single day. Hi Megan, you don't really know me, but I know your husband and I'm friends with him on Facebook and we served together in Iraq. I don't normally get on Facebook or social media anymore these days, but today I found myself scrolling and I stumbled upon your YouTube videos for sobriety. I just wanted to say that you re-inspired me to quit drinking yet again. I've gone for short periods of time in the past, but it never lasts. My husband has been sober for six months now and I decided that I am going to join him on this journey. So today is day one. Thank you for being so transparent with your story and I know it's going to be rough at times, but I'm looking forward to seeing where this journey takes me. I'm not gonna lie, it is so tough in the beginning, but it's so doable. And people like you, all of you that keep that keep with me and believe in me is why I do what I do. Thank you for these messages that I continue to get. I absolutely love them. In the past 10 months, I've realized how much alcohol has take, was taking over my life and how much was masked, especially sitting with my feelings is a whole different ball game. 10 months this month, I'm looking forward to my one year, but let me tell you, it has definitely been a roller coaster of emotions. I've gone through anger, I've gone through happy, I've gone through sad, I've gone through just like so frustrated, I've put a wall up, I just can't deal with certain things anymore because I don't have to. I used alcohol to mask and escape so much of my life that now I actually face it head on and I'm actually stronger now. I feel mentally stronger. And you know what? Like, you don't have to put up with the bullshit anymore. You can stay in your corner and put up those walls and set those boundaries. You don't have to stay around toxic people or substances. You can make the decision for yourself. And it feels so amazing. Eight months in March, and it was full of birthdays. Hit nine months in April, which is my birthday month, and we hit our 10 year wedding anniversary and usually we are in Vegas partying for a week and this year we actually went back to Oregon to visit my family for my birthday and that never happens. We went and we took the kids to the mountains for our 10 year anniversary. Usually I just want to drink and drink and drink and not have to worry about anything else but myself. This month and last month have been huge, huge shifts in my sober journey. And it's because I've realized that I do want my kids around way more than I ever did. And it was because alcohol was holding me back from being around them. And I don't ever want to lose sight of that. My children are so important to me. And that's one thing that I've definitely learned from this journey. Sitting on Mother's Day, realizing how much trauma I have faced throughout my life and the sadness that it brings me, not having those relationships with people that you feel like you should be close. It's a hard pill to swallow when you realize that like you were masking and escaping all these emotions all your life and I actually had to sit with them on Mother's Day this year and realize how sad I actually am. Breaking down in the shower and just realizing like, I don't have what a lot of people actually have and now I'm bettering myself and it makes it even harder to realize how much more, like, am I missing out or are they missing out? That's a good question. Do people want to be a part of our life and better themselves or do they just want to continue like being around like negative, like, and not bettering themselves? I want my kids to always need me. I don't want them to be like, oh, well, mom chose alcohol or mom, chose this or mom chose that over us. I want them to always know that they have op like an open arm and warm. Like I want them to call me when they need something. I don't ever want them to be like, 
I'm fine without my mom. I'm fine without my dad. Like, I don't want that relationship with my kids because it's quite sad. And I can't imagine how they would feel not feeling like they were close to me because right now they're my whole entire world and alcohol was tearing it apart. I can't believe how many years I went with letting alcohol destroy my relationship with my children. Yes, they are young and I have many years still to like recoup all that. They were involved in my life quite a bit. So when I say I was always trying to escape, it was all these little events that I always wanted to go to. I'd, you know, figure out a way to like leave them with my husband or leave them with grandma and grandpa. All the girls would just like figure out a way to escape and go hang out. We were escaping life. We weren't actually, you know, there was really no reason to drink all the time. 10 years of marriage. This was our first year, almost a year sober together. And that's a roller coaster itself. You get to know each other in a different way. You can't just drink your fights away. You actually have to face them like head on. It's a whole different feeling. The day that we quit drinking was, we woke up July 10th and started 75 hard. And I had hesitated for years to do this program and it has been life changing. I wasn't gonna fail. Hell no. And so I got through those 75 days. I've pushed through. I've said no to so many things along my way. If you are battling with alcohol and you just like rely on it so heavily as like a mental escape, you have to learn to just say no, to let go and just like find other tricks and like habits to break away. Sitting outside when I first stopped drinking, it wasn't like it was when I was drinking, but now that I've gone 10 months, I love sitting outside again and I don't have to have a drink in my hand. I can actually watch my children play, I can go on walks, I can go on bike rides, I can have like memorable phone calls at night. I don't have to be, you know, secluded to my house. If I need to run to the store now at eight o'clock at night to grab something, I'm not banned to my house because I'm drinking. On my weekends, I wake up, I wake up refreshed. We go hiking, we ride our bikes now, we go walking, we do like tons of play dates, meeting new people. And you know what's funny? You can actually meet new people without drinking. In the beginning of quitting drinking, it seems very, very so far out. Like. I'm never gonna meet anybody. I'm just gonna have to like seclude myself. And you know what? Yeah, it's it's tough at first and your friends all look at you differently. Everybody like treats, so many people treat you differently. It's, yeah, it's, quite, it's quite a thing, but you just have to embrace it. Like you're gonna be the weird one because, oh, you quit drinking, are you pregnant? No, hell no, not pregnant. I just quit drinking. Do you have a problem with that? A lot of people actually have a problem with you quitting drinking and then they say, oh, I can't escape and, or I don't know how to escape my life. Well, why do you need to escape your life? Why do you have to drink after a bad day? Why do you have to drink to celebrate a good day? Why does society push us to drink on these bad days, good days, rainy days, sunny days? Oh, I passed a test, gotta go celebrate, get effed up. Gotta, you know, oh crap, broke up with my boyfriend. Gotta go get wasted. You know, it just like, it, all these excuses just like calm, like keep piling up and you never get away from it because you don't want to realize that you're using it as an escape. Because I realized that I was using it as an escape for years, the past 10 months. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like the first four to six months were pretty tough, pretty brutal. And now I'm at a point where I really embracing my sobriety and getting mocktails at events now and just fully enjoying the conversations and remembering them, waking up, getting on with my day, not feeling sluggish, losing 20 pounds. I, I mean, doing different diets, like trying these different fad diets now because like, why not? Like, it's fun. You find different things in life that are fun. For those of you that are not wanting to let go of the bottle or just keep making the excuse, I think it's time to like actually like really think hard and long, like 
how much are you affecting? Are you losing relationships with your children? Are you and your spouse, are you and your significant other like not doing well because of alcohol? Are you choosing alcohol over your family or your friends? I mean, are you letting your friends dictate like what you do? Do you not have balls enough to like say no, I don't wanna do that tonight or I don't wanna do that on the weekend or you know, like are you just a follower and you just want to be a part of the group so bad that you're gonna continue down like the toxic spiraling cycle of alcohol. That was me, not gonna lie. I was the problem and I will admit it. But you know what, now I'm not. And now I'm actually influencing so many people to quit drinking. Like the messages that I get, it's absolutely phenomenal. And without you all, I don't know how I would stay accountable, but you guys are the one, you guys are my rocks and I, couldn't do it without you. And another message I would love to share with you guys. I mean, I could share so many messages. These are like personal messages. So if you guys feel like reaching out to me personally, I absolutely love that also. And I get to the comments as soon as I can. I've been super busy lately, but I do read them. I may not get to them right away, but another one. Hi, I am so-and-so from San Diego. A YouTube video popped up it showed you in the kitchen talking about quitting drinking. I started crying because everything you said from ruining relationships, feeling anxiety, unable to function because of hangovers, spending excessive money on alcohol, being passed out, etc. My sons are older and I keep trying to quit. I regret hardly being present with them because I was always in a vicious cycle fog. The guilt makes me reach for the bottle of wine and the cycle repeats. The other night I went out to dinner with my sons when the server asked what I would like to drink, my boys had that look on their faces like, here comes the wine, but they were not judging. I instead ordered a lemonade. It really broke my heart because they were smiling with relief. They were in a great mood. I wanted wine so badly, but didn't want to spoil the mood. When I got home, I took a few sneaky swigs of tequila to relax. I love and appreciate your story. I just want to let you know the guilt and the shame that comes with sneaking alcohol or like having people think that you're drinking too much. I understand that and it's hard, but we definitely have so many people looking up to us and I would love to know where you are at in your journey. What's inspired you? What do you wanna be better for? Who do you wanna be better for? I mean, what do you have holding on to? What is, what is your life without alcohol? Put yourself without alcohol and imagine the life that you could have without something holding you back.